Have you ever been playing Fallout and thought to yourself, I wish there was a faster mode of transport that I could use? And I'm not talking about fast travel. Sure, a motorbike is theoretically possible, and it's not as if motorized vehicles aren't a thing. We have seen the use of cars, trains, and boats. So it's not entirely out of the question, but the world has reverted to a simpler time, and one thing, if any, that should have become more popular is the use of horses. They're faster than walking, they can pull carts and wagons, and can cover long distances in a much shorter time. So why haven't we seen any? Now it's not like horses haven't existed in the Fallout universe. They have been mentioned on several occasions throughout the series, but not once have they been seen by the player. There are toys, paintings, and statues depicting them, and an entire tribe has named themselves in their memory. So why haven't we seen any? And it's not just horses, both mules and donkeys have also failed to make an appearance. Let's take a look through Fallout's history and see if there's anything pointing as to why they're so scarce. In Fallout 1, the first mention of an Equidae, that's the family, is mentioned by a farmer named Irwin. We can find Irwin at the hub. Interacting with him reveals that a group of raiders have taken over his farm, warned him not to return, and have also killed his pet donkey, Pugsley. This takes place in 2161, so donkeys have managed to survive for 80-something years since the Great War back in 2077. Now, on average, a donkey's lifespan is around 25 to 30 years, but it's not uncommon for a donkey to live closer to 50, especially when they're domesticated. Even so, we can still deduce that Pugsley is the offspring of a pre-war donkey, meaning that Pugsley's parents could still reproduce, so breeding doesn't seem to be the issue as to why we haven't seen more of them. In the Fallout Bible, Chris Avalone refers to Pugsley as a mule rather than a donkey. A mule is the offspring of a donkey and a horse, which implies that not only donkeys survived, but also horses. However, given that in-game Irwin uses the term donkey, it's likely just a simple mistake on his part. Next, we have Dane, one of the members found inside the cathedral. When the player speaks to him, it's clear that he's not all there. His insane ramblings will most likely leave the player wondering if there's any point to speaking with him. In truth, there's not. But one of the lines that Dane will shout is, I want a horse, I need a horse, bring me a horse, damn it, a horse. Now it's impossible for Dane to have been alive during the pre-war era. He is not a ghoul, nor does he have any life-altering technology. So horses must have survived for him to refer to them or he learned of their existence from another source, most likely a book or drawing. Either way, this is another piece of evidence that horses, at one time or another, existed. In Fallout 2, the Chosen One can speak with Ethel Wright, the head of New Reno's Temperance Union. During one of their conversations, the player can mention that they like rounding off the day with a few jugs of fermented mare's milk. So not only has a mare survived, but they were also lactating, meaning that a mare must have given birth to another horse. Now, the Chosen One was born in 2221. According to that logic, horses have persevered for well over a century. If they could have survived for all that time, then why haven't we seen any? And if the Chosen One's tribe has access to mare's milk, then where's the mare? Another indicator that horses exist is that male NPCs at the casino in New Reno will make sexist remarks about how they want the chosen one, bear in mind the player must be female and have the reputation of a porn star for this to happen, to be their main filly. A filly is a young mare, so this not only shows that they know what a horse is, but also the different terms for horses of varying ages. In Fallout 3, John Henry Eden, the self-proclaimed President of the United States, mentions during one of his radio broadcasts, Old minds are like old horses. You must exercise them if you wish to keep them in working order. Now you could argue that since Eden is a machine and never actually experienced any of the things he refers to, things such as growing up in rural Kentucky or playing their great national pastime baseball, that he could have also drew this from wherever he stores his endless list of inspirational quotes and patriotic songs. But nevertheless, horses are still mentioned, so I'm going to include it. In Fallout 3's DLC Mothership Zeta, we meet a little girl called Sally. 
Sally helps the player throughout the DLC and will comment that she's never seen a living horse and can't believe that people actually got to ride real living ones. And Paulson, another NPC from the Mothership Zeta DLC, will have several comments, all to do with the Giddy Up Buttercup toys and posters. He is from the Old West and was a rancher, so he's pretty familiar with the animal. Now that looks like some tough riding. Those things real? What kind of horses are these anyway? I can't see anyone having any respect riding into town on one of those things. Hell, my horse never did that. I couldn't get Paulson to say this last one, but it is in his dialogue. Why look at what we got here. Little girl here riding one of those horses. Giddy up buttercup. Kinda catchy, ain't it? Horses are not only mentioned in the graphic novel All Roads, but can also be seen. One of the NCR soldiers in the Bitter Springs Massacre flashback can be seen riding a horse. However, given as the animal is seen in a chem-fueled fever dream, it's unreliable. In the Fallout New Vegas Honest Hearts DLC, one of the tribes has called themselves the Dead Horses, and they also use war clubs that have been carved into the shape of a horse's head. One could argue that New Canaan is the ideal location for a wild horse to call home, which would support how the tribe not only knew of the word horse, but also what they looked like. Although their ancestors could have passed down drawings and tales from before the war, and explained what the creatures were. And let's not forget the survivalist Randall Clark, who did gift the original survivors with many books, including storybooks for the children, which could have no doubt included a picture of a horse. The last thing in Fallout New Vegas regarding horses, at least that I know of, is a book titled Pretty Pretty Horses, A History of the Mongol Empire. This is a quest item used to convince the Great Khans to break their association to Caesar's Legion. The title hints that this could also be a children's book, and it does mention the Mongol Empire, whose people regarded horses to be a status of wealth, so it's easy to see where the Khans would be persuaded by the item and the mention of horses. And the final thing before moving on to the later titles is the official Fallout editor for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, also known as the Garden of Eden Creation Kit, or GEC for short. The GEC provides the community with tools that allows a player to expand their game. Users can create and edit any of the game's data, including locations, creatures, and complex scripting. I haven't actually downloaded this, but you can search through its files by going to gec.bethesda.com and simply searching for the word you want more information on. I typed the word horse and actually got a couple of things. The phrases loading horse mount and is sitting on horse could be seen. Was there perhaps supposed to be horses in Fallout 3 and or New Vegas? Or was it simply a thought that was later removed because of the lore? This theme of adding something to do with horses and later removing it does appear later on, so it's not too far of a stretch to assume that this was also the case. I also tried searching for both mules and donkeys, but the searches returned with nothing. In Fallout 4, the first major sign of horses is the Easy City Downs horse track, where a number of robots can be seen racing. The robots include models such as the Mr. Gutsy, Handy, Assaultron, and iBot. There's also a commentator that calls out various lines regarding the robots' actions. This is done similar to how they would have done it pre-war, giving the notion that they at least understand how the races used to happen. We got some tough competition out here today. This race is really heating up. Next, we have a simple drawing of a horse, chicken, and cow. This can be found both near Bunker Hill in one of the houses, and in the Far Harbor DLC at the Unmarked Trapper Outpost northwest of the MS Azalea. So even out here on the island of Far Harbor, they know what a horse is. In Fallout 76, Scout Leader Jaggy also mentions horses and how he misses seeing them in Appalachia. I find this one the most strange, second to New Canaan. The Flatwoods are supposed to be this untouched oasis where wildlife is relatively normal and more importantly, fertile. If horses existed within the area, 
and keep in mind this is only 20 years after the bombs dropped, so there's a high chance that domestic horses are still roaming, wouldn't those horses have travelled here? Wouldn't the people have captured them, tamed them and used them? There are no horses in Appalachia, and that just doesn't sit right with me. If there was a chance to see them, this would be the best we had. Not that long after the Great War, in a place that's relatively safe, all things considered, and in a time span where domestic horses could still be alive. And the last thing I found that involves horses is the mention of them in the description of Old Painless, a hunting rifle the player can find in Fallout Shelter. The description reads, can put your horse, or a deathclaw, out of its misery in a second. I think it's safe to say that horses, donkeys, and mules have all existed at one point or another in the Fallout universe. The evidence is clearly there, but as to why they are no longer living, well, that's quite simple. When asked about the horses seen in all roads, Chris Avalone said that picture in the comic was an error, and that no one saw it until it was too late. He also went on to say that there were certain lines of dialogue in New Vegas that had to be specifically removed because they mentioned horses. An example of this is one of Raul's stories. The ghoul companion from Mexico originally referenced horses, and they cut it because they didn't want to imply that horses still existed. Long story short, horses and mules and donkeys no longer exist because the developers simply don't think they would have survived. If the developers were to go back on their word and introduce horses sometime in the near future, I hope it's law friendly and through the means of ghoulification, or perhaps a special encounter, where the player stumbles upon the four horses of the apocalypse, or something similar that allows horses to be in the game without breaking the law. One thing we can be certain of is that horses in the United States are extinct, and until the developers decide to change that, that's the way it's going to be. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.